I am Babla Jonathan and this is the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. In our top stories in this edition of the news, the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, announces the upcoming implementation of the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of the country hit by socio-political and security tensions for close to three years today. President Paul Bia made a revelation today during a peace forum in the French capital city Paris and goods worth over 30 million francs a year consumed by wild flames. The flames engulfed a section of the Mbopi market here in Cameroon's economic capital dweller last night. Coming up, developments and details. Wild flames engulfed a section of the Mbopi market here in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. The flames uh, broke out in uh, one of the shops and consumed a considerable section of that market. Innocent as a report. <laughs> It's p.m. Monday. A section of the Mbopi market goes in flames. <laughs> Many are triggered to save the entire market with individual efforts before arrival of firefighters. <laughs> Prompt intervention of the firefighting unit was noted. Difficulties faced saw reinforcement from the Douala Sea and Airport Fighting Brigades. The flames were successfully quenched, even though contents of dozens of shops were ravaged. Immediately after this, police and gendarmes to secure safety goods sent away those not concerned. <laughs> Victims were allowed to assemble what were still valuable. An electric pole was destroyed with cables disconnected. Whistleblowers attribute the Mbopi fire incident to haphazard connection of electric cables. And goods worth tens of millions of francs they went into flames during that fire incident at the Mbopi market in Douala last night. And the fire incident has been blamed on uh, the poor functioning of electrical connections in that market following the return of electric energy after several hours in darkness. Manji can give refers in details. Mbopi main market Tuesday. After the fire incident that occurred on Monday night, elements from the army rescue units were still spotted trying to put out the last flames. Meanwhile, persons who owned stores in the affected zones were also present to see what their stores have become after the incident with some that couldn't hold out their tears. Okay, most of the traders who lost their goods have blamed the incident on the force that energy returned after almost a complete black Monday in Douala due to the lack of electricity supply in some neighborhoods. They have multiple lights. See so that light is not a, of good quality. So we wish when light has gone, by the fact that light has come out as caused fire which have burned. The, the stores we are victims and from this year which is coming to an end people have put money in goods we have bought many many goods more goods and you can see everything has gone on fire so as we are talking it's very difficult for us to take it easy because when even at the entrance of the market it's very difficult to enter because the access is not easy the anarchical way at which connection of cable were done in the market have been blamed 
for the fire that has left several persons crying. The army rescue soldiers who were immediately on the scene of the incident also encountered tough times before fighting out the flames. Our principal difficulties is the fact that we cannot move easily to intervene in Bopi Market because the, obst the obstacles are enormous. The time we could take to fight the fire is the time we take to fight against the obstacles to find a way to get to the market. That's what takes us to the largest number of stores that got bent. Notwithstanding the damages recorded as a result of the inferno, the number of stores that got burnt still remain a mystery. A victim of the fire incident says, As like uh, 40 stores which have been burned. While the head of the army rescue unit on the scene debunks the number, indicating that, In the conclusion that 20 stores got burnt. 20 in, in, as a number. No matter the number of stores that were burned, many traders in the Mbopi main market are now calling on the government to help in curbing such incidents from occurring, particularly at the end of the year when most of the traders just filled their stores with new goods. Inadequate electric energy supply remains a major problem in the Republic of Cameroon from the big cities to the hinterlands and such incidents have been a recurrent. Such fire incidents in the town of Douala attributed to uh, problems linked to electric energy supply have been occurring at close intervals of time now to the opaque city of Limbe in the southwest region of Cameroon floods adversely affect affected academic activities in that part of the country. Today, uh, some neighborhoods were overflooded following a heavy downpour. David Simaimo reports from Limbe. A child going to school. He leaving the house to go to school. There's somebody who is fishing. Look at my trouser on my armpit, my shoes. I'm sorry for this child. What a Cameroon are we living? We pretend that the country is good. But it's a total mess. We must say it. Why didn't you go to school? I went to school bed. The water is our class. We so stopped having classes. Okay. So everybody went back home. Okay. Um, the, way, the way the rain felt today it was up to a level that you can't even remain in class. Not checking since when the rain has been falling and water, when you enter the class, water is machine on your waist level. And there was no way that everybody ran and left the school. Even the principal, the vice principal and the principal car, they are still in school. They were, the car is in there. All the class, everywhere is water. Water has covered all the decks to window level. So it's not me, I'm going to the house. You can see for yourself. Their children are all inside the classrooms and they are finding it difficult to play around because everywhere is flooded. Even the playground at my right hand side here, it is actually flooded for the kids to play. And that is the situation. The staffs here, the teachers, they are equally confused, just like the children. And of course, the children are just excited seeing water everywhere. It is the situation here at the Down Beach area in the city of Fulimbe, where schools have been flooded with water. And of course, uh, the school authorities, who of course prefer not to speak on the microphone, says that they are hoping that one day the government will intervene and actually put a proper drainage pattern so that the school should be free from flood. These children, we are told that they didn't go to school today because of the flood. The children had no way to actually move out from this neighborhood to the roadside. And that's the situation some neighborhoods of Lembe this morning faced with a heavy downpour that actually the city actually witnessed this morning. We are about to go to school and the rain just started. We just hmm. stayed at home. Want to see the rain just... It was very heavy. So you people didn't go to school today? Not go to school today. Yep. Even our school, there is no place to see. People of this neighborhood and other neighborhoods that often flood during rainy season are beckoning on the powers that be to do something fast and remedy the situation. Walking through this neighborhood right up to here has not been easy for me as I need to walk through the water right up to my waist. In fact, putting on a trouser would have been very difficult. That is why you find me with a shirt and of course a t-shirt. It is a sweet Thanks. David Sunmaimo reporting there from Limbe in the southwest region.
of uh, Cameroon and on our series on the risk zones occupied by inhabitants in the Republic of Cameroon, we're going to take you to the foot of the upstation hill in the northwest regional capital, Bamenda, where Stella um, Bu, uh, correspondent tells us that people continue occupying the area despite the risk of an eventual landslide that could be very catastrophic. A report. This slope from downtown Bamenda, it looks beautiful and a side worth visiting. This is the Sisiya neighborhood located at the foot of the station hill in Bamenda. At least 80 households are exposed to high risks in this area that was already declared unfit for human settlement. In 2015, a slum upgrading program was launched with aims at reducing the population living in slum areas enhancing the process of decentralization and improve urban governance. Today, the population of CCI is increasing. New houses are being built, many without building permits. Some of the inhabitants are aware of the dangers involved in creating more living space by digging below the slope, but have blamed their continuous stay on the lack of means to gain accommodation elsewhere in town. For this place, as I see me, so I be the more I be the work job more blocks when I pay, because I stay for the place when I reach place, so I no give me any place to stay, so I no get no choice to stay there because I no get any place to go there. I no say na reach, but na, the only thing I say money no be there for go for find place go buy place. Many have mixed feelings as to what may happen in the near future. There is no say reach there. more and more more than ten years. Ah uh, no. Not it because I don't stay because me I want I want come for years so we people them there here. Mm -hmm. Now yeah no no nothing. No, I'm not afraid that the place can come down and come and meet us here. Because for the past ten years we have been here and nothing has ever happened. Never fear and I say some other if you call us to if you do now because he did now for you pray for up there. Pray for up that side because some feed day for up here we did a play ball for the the Sisiya neighborhood is characterized by flood-prone areas, narrow roads and unplanned buildings. This exposes thousands who live there to very high risks. And now to the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, where commercial motorbike riders are protesting against a decision by administrative authorities prohibiting them from circulating in the central town and some major roads of the seven subdivisions that make up the town. They went on rampage at Karifubek, Chinga and Mokolo today, and the bikers are complaining that they cannot be paying taxes but not allowed to circulate freely for the complicating the already difficult living conditions. Authorities say the decision taken by the senior division officer of the Fundi division is intended to fight urban disorder in the town of Yaoundé. Now take a listen to one of the motorbike riders in Yaoundé. Really, I'm really angry. Let me just go shorter and cut it the way I am. To. I have five brothers with my father in the house. That have run from Bamenda. I'm feeding them through that my, that bike. I'm using that bike to feed all these people. I'm using that bike to take care of everything of myself and the family. Now, if they can stop me not to keep, not to leave Koibison to Mokolo, or Mokolo to 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 Biamasi, Meleng, that means they are like pushing me to go and steal. Or do things that they will call me tomorrow a terrorist. They will call me a separatist, of which um, that's just the means I can have to survive with my family. So I really plead on the government that the decision they have taken, they should like look into it and try to solve it in a peaceful way as a peaceful Cameroon. Thank you very much. Cameroon's head of state, Paul Bier, announces the imminent implementation of the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, a recommendation that emerged from the major national dialogue in Yaoundé. President Paul Bier made the revelation today during a peace forum in the French capital city, Paris. Take a listen to this extract of President Paul Bier, translated by Informi Armstrong Sander. Mon pays, Monsieur le Président, est compliqué. 
The history of my country, Mr. President, is very complicated. We were initially a German colony, and after the First World War, Germany was defeated, and the country got divided between France and Britain. That then resulted to a juxtaposition of two civilizations and cultures, which made things pretty delicate. However, we did all to bring equality between the two languages, that is uh, French and English, but mentalities, educational systems, as well as judicial systems are different. This led to the conflicts that we are currently working to resolve and to accord a special status to the English-speaking parts of my country. But they will remain within the nation Cameroon. That is our major concern now. We had the possibility to integrate them directly into the Francophone system, which is the system of the majority. But we choose to preserve their identity. That is why we are putting in place a special system that recognizes the specificities of English-speaking Cameroonians. La possibilité de les intégrer directement dans le système francophone, qui était celui de la majorité. The President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, speaking there on the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon during the Peace Forum in the French capital city, Paris. In the meantime, the situation uh, remains tense and unstable in the two Anglophone regions of the country as the Anglophone crisis that has been pulling on for over three years has continued, uh, deepening with killings, abductions and destruction of properties continuing in those two regions. And it is within this context that the new Division Officer for Nguti Subdivision in the Southwest region of the country has been commissioned into his functions and urged to work in order to ensure or contribute to the return of normalcy and peace in his area of command and the entire Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon Derry Jato reports. <laughs> After being shot down for years by the separatist fighters, this Nguti ceremonial grounds town is today witnessing a ceremony to install a Tengenen Kelvin Oben as the new divisional officer for Nguti subdivision. A list and population of Nguti subdivision. This is your divisional officer, Mr. Etengenen Kelvin Oben. Take command. Officiating the installation ceremony, Chakwe Nodai Jean Marie, the senior divisional officer for Coupe Mwaningoba Division, called on the new divisional officer from Ngoti Subdivision to always assemble. You must therefore, as a father, seek to gather rather than divide your population. Listen, <laughs> analyze, understand before taking any decision. And that he should continue from where his predecessor ended for administration is continuous. Ensure continuity of the administration as all matters for which your predecessors have given solution should be no means constitute a subject matter of any debate. To the population of Ngoti subdivision, their new divisional officer is a tool the government has sent to them. Thus, they should use him to make and not to mar their subdivision. It should be a true reflection of what you shall make him. Instead of waiting anxiously to celebrate his failure, it will be better to be proud at the end of his tenure to cite what you did to enable him to succeed. Etengenen Calvin Oben, the new divisional officer from Guti subdivision, must have seen the realities on the ground. Less than 1% of the tens of thousands of people he is sent to govern did not even show up to welcome him. Some are afraid and others are far off in the bushes because of the war. And how to bring them back is his assignment. The new divisional officer from Nguti subdivision therefore must put wisdom and knowledge in context to make sure that this grandstand is not shut down again by separatist fighters. The Tengenen Kelvin Oben is taking over from Mekeset Allen Eber as the new divisional officer from Goti Subdivision. The installation ceremony took place peacefully. 
and the new divisional officers of the Limbe 1, 2 and 3 subdivisions still in the southwest region of Cameroon have equally been urged to work for the return of peace and normalcy in the areas of Coman and the entire Anglophone regions of Cameroon. He has also been told to work for the well-being of the people of the different municipalities. They have been told uh, to work for the well-being of the people of their respective municipalities. Details with Davidson Maimo. Davidson Maimo with that report. We're going to be coming back to it in our subsequent uh, news editions. Now we're going to take this report compiled by uh, Innocent Aze. He is making a compilation of uh, reactions of politicians on the announced uh, municipal and legislative elections due for February 2020. The views are uh, contrasting and uh, they are converging and divergent, notably from the opposition and also political leaders of the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPD and political party, his report. The scheduling of the legislative and municipal elections for the 9th of February 2020 by a presidential decree has attracted widespread reactions from various political figures on debate platforms like Dwadi Repons on Equinox Television. Cette convocation de électoral intervient dans un climat social tendu. Barista Lavoisier, SAPI, SDF militants holds that the electorate is convinced at the moment when the socio-political climate is tensed, especially in the northwest and southwest regions. Also, the birth of a new crisis in the west region over the hectares of land to resettle victims of the Guashi landslides contested by many custodians. This to the SDF is a complete provocation. As it had earlier noted, it is impossible for elections to hold amid war in the two English-speaking regions. Au dernier élection sénatoriale, les élus municipaux de l'Ebialem, dans le département de l'Ebialem, ont voté à Tchang. Reform Party est prêt à accepter des personnes. Barrister H. Emmanuel Agbo of the Reform Party, on his part, believes the CPDM will exploit the crisis to play its usual trick game to declare voting went on massively and smoothly. Pascal Masanga Nyamding of the CPDM admits the tension in the two English speaking regions has negative impacted elections at the detriment of the opposition, especially the SDF. Si il y avait eu la paix au nord-ouest, au sud-ouest, parce que moi j'ai beaucoup d'amis. He believes if there was peace, the SDF would not have reaped the degrading results during the October 7, 2018 presidential election. Il a raison parce que il pense égoïstement. The Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party is recommending. On voudrait, par ces élections là, au minimum, procéder nous-mêmes aux réformes que le régime n'arrive pas à faire lui-même. Et cela passe par une majorité parlementaire. And inviting administrative authorities to respect laws of the country and equally freedom of public meetings and manifestations. La liberté de manifestation, les libertés simplement des citoyens. Avec un agent, un représentant du MSC, sincèrement j'ai peur. J'ai peur parce qu'ils sont très violents. But these to Pascal Masanga Nyamding of the CPDM should be intolerable. As to him, the CRM has implanted fear within the ruling CPDM party with its persistent violence and irresponsible operations to destabilize the country. Considering the fact that the opposition had demanded elections to be organized when peace is reinstated in the country with electoral reforms, other politicians like Barrister Asho Emmanuel says no opposition at this time should be blindfolded and should effectively participate in the elections whether or not their preconditions have been saluted by the regime in power in order to defeat and and put an end to the CPDM regime. Une activité n'a été interdite. Ça, j'étais sûr. 
The November session of Parliament opens today in both the lower and upper houses of uh, Parliament at the level of the upper house of uh, Parliament. Senators of the Social Democratic Front walked out of the opening session in protest to a number of dashed expectations and disappointment over some uh, issues that are supposed to be handled by the upper house of parliament, notably with regards to the uh, country's uh, uh, socio-political uh, climate with the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and the issue of uh, elections and in the lower house of uh, parliament. One of the uh, members of the uh, National Assembly, Honorable Emmanuel Panui of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, CPDM, spoke to a correspondent in Yaoundé. Take a listen. Hello. I'm not of the SDF, so I can't say, I can't give the reason because they didn't explain to us why they are not here. But as far as I'm concerned, I think I am looking forward uh, to this uh, present session with a lot of hope. Hope in the sense that we are expecting draft bill to come in line with the major national dialogue so as to tackle the issues in Northwest and Southwest. Uh, secondly, uh, from the speech of the speaker, it is also obvious that the crisis from Northwest and Southwest has affected not only the two regions, but the entire nation economically and socially. Do you think it's, it will be possible to organize elections in the two regions, now as and Southwest? Well, I am an actor. I'm not the organizer. Yeah. So I can't answer that question in the place of the organizer. Yes. But what do you think? But, but my hope yes. is that yes. elections should go on. Okay. Yes. Honorable Emmanuel uh, Bani of the CPDM speaking there to a correspondent Gizogo in the nation's political camp. The Yaoundé. Now in sports, the uh, female lionesses or the lionesses of the Republic of Cameroon beat Ivory Coast in the uh, last qualification game ahead of the 2020 Olympic Games uh, today at the Amado Aijo Stadium in Yaoundé. The lionesses overpowered the Ivory Warriors uh, two goals to uh, one. That was uh, the last uh, qualification game ahead of not the, the, the last. They see have uh, uh, another game uh, coming up uh, in term, talking about qualification for the 2020 Olympic Games. And now we're going to talk about the under 23. Uh, African uh, Nations uh, Cup, the under-23 na Nations uh, men's uh, football team, and now second in Group A of the African Nations under-23 Nations Cup, ongoing in Egypt, and the boys of uh, Rigo Besson defeated Mali in a slim 1-0 score uh, to record fourth in the uh, two matches, four points in the two matches. Smanji and Gabriel has more. It was a very vital encounter for the under-23 Lions against their counterparts from Mali. Reasons why from the Black on Egypt Thursday in a final Group A match. A draw for Cameroon will see them through if Ghana doesn't beat Mali. Host nation Egypt beat Ghana in a five-goal thriller to move up to six points, qualifying for the next stage of the tournament, and Mali eliminated after recording two defeats. And Cameroon's under-23 national men's football team is now second in Group A of the African Nations uh, Nations Cup going on in Egypt. The Nations Cup of their category, they have four points as of now. Coming up next, talking point. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving a traditional and civil society leader, Chief Dr. Joseph Mufo. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan. For, it's really a pleasure in this year's prestigious program. 
All right, the head of state announced today during the peace forum in the French capital city Paris that measures have been taken to confer a special status on the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon as recommended by the major national dialogue which took place in Yaoundé. What's your take on this uh, announcement and the expected implementation of the special status? Well, Mr. Babila Jonathan, thank you very much for really looking at the points that the head of state has given a special status for the two regions. Well, we are still waiting to see the kind of special status he has given for the two regions. It has long been said, especially in these uh, difficult moments of elections, we don't exactly know because before he sent out that communications today, we don't exactly know if the election would have been governed in these two regions despite all the confusions the people of these two regions are facing in the crisis and again the content of the special status is not yet known as of now as you indicated but uh, uh, one month has elapsed after the major national dialogue and there had been uh, some uh, people saying asking why the head of state has been silent and now he decides to speak but not in Cameroon in France during a peace meeting in France, and he announces the implementation of the special status. What do you think about this? The fact that he, he has announced it, first of all, and the fact that he did so in France and not in Cameroon. Well, Mr. Babila Jonathan, thank you. You know the head of state is the head of state. Meanwhile, he say Cameroon is Cameroon. If he has decided to go to France, yes, France is our tutor master. We cannot exactly know what he has done. Former colonial for. master? Yes, our former colonial master. We don't know it is maybe that in complicity, maybe that the people who have asked him to say though before coming back. Despite all the special status, the time that has even been given to convoke the core electoral for the election is too short. We all that call, we can make a name, it's a game. The regime is playing. And the master of the regime is the head of state. If he can go to France to address his nation, we do not... He was this. responding to a question during the peace forum. A peace forum, we can call that, in fact, Cameroonians, he is the head of state. He has to address his people in his country. We see no reason going right to France before giving a special status to Anglophones about the crisis. And we are still waiting, I precise where, Mr. Babila Jonathan, we are still waiting to see the special status he has prepared for these Anglophones. We are still waiting to see, because it has been said, but let it be put in place. Simply as the uh, decentralization was saying since 1960, uh, since 1996, up to then, it has not been put to place. Look at deals. They are still to maneuver elections, which is wrong. According to the government, the decentralization which you're talking about, the implementation is a process and, and not a one-stop thing. Uh, and the government says that the, the process is progressive, is progressing towards the uh, expected end where benefits of the decentralization will trigger down to the lower population uh, or to the grassroots population. Now, talking about the uh, special status, he says that the head of state that he's announcing the implementation of this special status as a way to solve the crisis. Will it really solve the crisis? Do you think that this special status is going to solve the crisis? Mr. Babila Jonathan, I will not uh, hide my feelings and I will not talk with, I will talk without any fear of favor. The implementation of the state, uh, special status have nothing to do with the crisis at all. It has nothing to do with the crisis. The head of state, he's our father. He's the father of all the nations. If all these children have been crying for three consecutive years, the head of state has never think just a day to spend the day and go to the northwest and southwest region and but say, it, my children, let us sit together and see to this problem. And he will go right to France and come and say he has implemented a special statute to govern the crisis. I say no, Mr. Babila Jonathan. But the special status has to do with the form of the state, which is the major issue at the center of the uh, crisis and the Anglophone problem. Well, it can have a major cause with the form of state. 
but not to solve the Anglophones crisis. The head of state really know what to do. Why do you think that it's not going to solve the Anglophone crisis? To my point, to see it will not solve the Anglophone crisis because uh, you see the killings every day. They are Cameroonians. All are Cameroonians. Military are Cameroonians. I am an Anglophone. I do not buy the ideas of my brothers killing here and there to bring a solution. The head of state can call to all these phones. They are children of villages. All these sons and daughters, they are from villages, governed by phones. He can invite all these phones and sit on the table and discuss with them and negotiate with them to end up this crisis. Implementing a special status saying it will solve the crisis, Mr. Babila Jonathan, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think that will bring a solution to the crisis. But many of the phones are no longer trusted by their people on grounds that uh, they have soiled their hands in politics. Many of them have joined the CPDM, uh, whereas uh, some civil society leaders like you and politicians say that phones are supposed to be apolitical. Uh, they're, they're not supposed to belong to any political camp. And so inviting the phones to discuss with them, to negotiate with them, Instead of what some people are saying, negotiating with Sisi Kwayuktabe and the other leaders, is it going to solve the problem? No, Mr. Babila Jonathan, you know exactly what is a phone in a village. A phone is a close collaborator to the administrator, like the governor, the dues, and the senior due. They are the close collaborator. Those who say they cannot involve funds to politics, they are not asking funds to carry the grants fees of politics, but to collaborate to give good information to the state, which the collaborators, the governors, as they are direct to them, they need to give them information, solutions to carry problems within this moment of tragedy. Northwest and Southwest are facing it. Funds are implicated in this situation. To solve the situation, the head of state must discuss with fund, negotiate with fund. If you have people around America, France, Britain, Canada, that they are the diaspora, they are from these villages, governed by phones. Phones know all of them, know their family. They can call them to order. Before coming to what they say, what has just been made, the national dialogue. This was the grassroots. This was how it would have been managed. I am with the civil society, as you say. Just look at the election. All the members to govern the elections have been appointed by the government. They will do everything to appoint, to favor those who appoint them at that same position, which is fair, which is a fair. Now, earlier you said that instead of going to France uh, to announce the implementation of the special status during the uh, peace forum, uh, the head of state should have rather gone to the northwest and southwest, and southwest region. region. Why do you think that he should go there? He has been sending prime ministers and other top government officials who are his representatives to go and solve that problem. Why do you think that he himself must go to those regions? Mr. Babila Jonathan, we are all chiefs of family. There are problems in the family. That you can't send your representative to do what you deem necessary to do. He will do it his own way and his own capacity. But you, as the father... When children are fighting, you can't sense your representative to certain problems of those children. The head of state really know what is going on. He is the right person at the right place, not sending his representative. They can assist and second his effort. Accompany him there. Civil society leaders, I am one. They accompany him there and meet these people. Dialogue with them. You can even invite those phones, dialogue with them, discuss with them, negotiate with them to talk to these their children in diaspora, left and right. Call them to order before any other amicable settlement. This situation is going worse and worse just simply to the fact that the head of state has not met any calendar to meet people of these two regions and say, my dear children, what has happened has happened. Let us sit together and see how we can arrange this situation amicably. Okay, the elections, municipal and legislative elections, have been announced for February mm -hmm. next year, but the crisis is still raging on in the two Anglophone regions of the country. Do you think that it is proper to organize elections in this context? Do you think that elections can effectively take place in this context, especially in the crisis hit Northwest and Southwest regions? Mr. Babila Jolatan, to the best of my viewpoint, 
just even the period scheduled to carry them, the 15 days that have, they have the heads of state and the people concerning to the election has given that, it is too small. It is a game, Mr. Babila Jolatan, just to reject lists of people and the administrative tribunal will be carrying process left and right. This is just a game. They're supposed to give at least one to two months for candidate to really, you see, Certificate of non convictions for people, though it has been shared that they can do it in Yawende, for those of the Northwest and Southwest, and those of the Northern region, they can do it in Yawende. But that is not the normal, that 15 days to prepare documents to forward to ELECA. Can elections take place in the Northwest and Southwest regions in well, the present context? Well, uh, all of us are really looking at the situation between you and me. To my own view, to the elections process, if the special status has been made that the election should take place in these two regions, Mr. Babila Jonathan, it's only God that can answer this question. Not Chief Dr. Moffo, it's only God that can answer this question. Because I am from the place, I really see what is happening on the fee. It will be very difficult. If it is magic, let us wait and see the magic. What should we we'll abide the idea, yes, what should be done? What should be done before the elections? To my own viewpoint, they should carry the elections process further and give enough time for the head of state to really prepare the fee. Sit with these funds of villages, sit with the members concerned to this crisis and negotiate and bring in peace. There cannot be election when these two regions are not concerned. It means there's no elections. Mm. Some have interpreted it as cessation. Well, not even in interpreting as cessation, but the point is it's that... It's synonymous to dividing the country. Yes, you, the, the point is that you have 10 regions. When they are seeing Angufon's crisis, it's a Cameroonian crisis. It has involved in all the rest of the eight regions. People are suffering, Mr. Babila Jonathan. It Do is not just limiting in these two regions that you are seeing. Things are worse. Look just what is happening in Yawende now. Look at what has just happened to Nube now. Those are forms of things that it is coming gradually. Many other regions can enter the crisis just as good money. Simply the fact that they have neglected. Chief Dr. Joseph Mufo, civil society and traditional leader, thanks for coming. Thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan. It's really a pleasure to be in your Thanks. program. Thanks, viewers, for staying with us. That's it for today.